Which of these artists died in 1926? Rembrandt, Monet, Botticelli, Caravaggio. It wasn't Botticelli or Caravaggio. I, was I agree with you there. And Rembrandt was um, way back in the old Dutch masters era. Yes, he was, wasn't he? <laughs> I <laughs> made cigars. Um, I, I'd be confident enough to save a lifeline, which is uh, always good. You're going to go for money. For money. And so means we. You're so bossy, that's the thing about you. Do we you started where you left off, really, haven't you, you yeah. two? Yeah, it yeah, yeah. The bickering of Tuesdays yeah. carried on to Saturday. Well, you know, I would say it's definitely not Botticelli or Caravaggio, because it <laughs> way, way, way back. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You see it. It's money, Chris. Agree on your final answer? Show us yes. the money. Yes. <laughs> final answer? Yes. Yes. It's the right answer. You got sixteen thousand pounds. Welcome back. You see, Ross, you'd forgotten, haven't you? How tense it gets. Oh, I, I, I can't believe how tense. When it goes orange like that, I know. I just stopped crossing my hands because my heart's coming through my chest. Okay, right. you got sixteen thousand pounds, which is great. Have a look, though, at question number ten. You are six away from one million. This is for thirty-two thousand. In Greek mythology, a puzzle about the three ages of man was called the riddle of the what? Phoenix, centaur, sphinx, minotaur. I have no scooby. We're following a friend. Are we? Um, well, let's, let we think about it. Wow. If I was to leap in, I'd go for phoenix. But I wouldn't do that, of course. Um, I can honestly say that not one of these... Sphinx. Well, well I've heard of the Greek, middle of the Sphinx. But Greek mythology. But the only Sphinx I can think of is on the outskirts of Cairo. <laughs> and its face is slightly more expressive than yours is now, Christophe. It's not well, actually. There's bits missing up. There's bits of mine missing, but there's lots missing on the screen. Is that right? You could get more, um, it's weathered. I think the weathered look. The gap here is so immense. For that charity, I just think that we should phone. Well, it's going to be Jack Brand, isn't it? Yes. It's going to be who? Jack Brand. Who's he? Jack Brand is a former politics lecturer at Glasgow University. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got a real interest in classical history and building him up. And. Uh, it's going to be good. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, well, now listen, you've still got two other lifelines anyway. You've still got to ask the audience, yeah. and you've still got a 50 50. Okay. Uh, you gonna talk to him? I'll talk to him. Hello? Hi, Jack? Jack, yes, it's Jack. Hello, Jack, it's Chris Tarrant here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Good evening. Well, I'd like to be a millionaire, thank you. No, 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 it's not down to you, Jack. Feel free, you can try on another occasion. But tonight it's about Kay and Ross, Kay Adams and Ross Kelly are here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, they're doing fine. In fact, they're doing very well. They're on £16,000. Yes. But at this point, Jack, they're stuck. Now, they say you're easily the most intelligent man they know. Well, they must not know very many people, that's the, that's the problem. <laughs> Jack, next voice here will be Kay's. she tell you the question. There are still four possible answers. One of these is worth £32,000. Right. OK. OK. OK, 30 seconds. Good luck. Your time starts now. Hi, Jack. Hi. In Greek mythology, a puzzle about the three ages of man was called the riddle of the what? Sphinx. 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 You're absolutely sure, Jack? I think so, yes. Yeah. It's not Phoenix, Centaur, or Minotaur? And um, no, it was the Sphinx. The Sphinx asked, I think it was Theseus, uh, about it, and uh, he, 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 had, he answered the, the, the story completely correctly. Sphinx. Jack, Sphinx. thanks very much. Uh, speak to you soon. Bye. <laughs> Got a bit of added extra for you. <laughs> Ten seconds there. I thought we'd learn a bit. <laughs> so we go with Jack then. So we knew it was the Sphinx. We didn't Absolute, have to do that. No, no hit. We didn't know. No hit. No hitting. He loves exactly, it. No hitting. Um, are we going with Jack? Yes, we are. Yes. Final answer. Sphinx. It's the right answer. You've got <laughs> 32 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Jack. We've never doubted you, Jack. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh. Now, have a look at this. This is what you came for on Tuesday night. Oh, Saturday yes, night, yes. you now go home to snip with at least 
that amount of money. Fish your eyes on that something. £32,000. But we don't want to give you that, don't we? But that safeguards SNP for a year. They wouldn't have to worry about their funding. They, really? Well, not that they could ever relax, but uh, that's what it would mean. You know. Fantastic. Mm. It's a great position. You're guaranteed £32,000. Uh, you've still got a 50-50. You've still got uh, Ask the Audience. Next question is for £64,000. You're five away from a million. Let's have a look. It's not far. Which American mm -hmm. author wrote the novel Tender is the Night? Ross is not. <coughs> Made me nothing. Let's see. Jack London. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Ernest Hemingway. Herman Melville. Sure. Definitely F. Scott Fitzgerald. You were nodding very vigorously, but oh, sometimes in contestants. Sometimes you're just very lucky. It's, you know, some of these pig questions you just don't get, but sometimes the, the idea comes up before the option. Happy? So, do you trust me? Yeah, yeah I know the two books that Ross has read is Scruples and uh, Tender as the Night. <laughs> <laughs> and Judith Krantz ain't there, so... Um... Final answer? Yes. Final answer. It's the right answer, you got 64 pounds! <laughs> Have a look at this, this is question number 12, it's worth 125 grand. Which of these pop shows was broadcast first? Oh boy. Ready, steady, go. Six, five, special. Top of the pops. Well, I usually enjoy saying it's before my time, but not tonight. Um, this might be one we could ask our audience. Do you know they're a bit young and good looking for that? Completely dark. How can you tell? I was just trying to butter them up so they'd get it right. I wouldn't trust this amount of a drop on uh, basically a, a, a one in three guess from me. Yeah, the only one I could probably rule out would be top of the pops. But let's uh, can we ask the audience? Because can. Yeah. Audience, let's try and get Ross and Kate up to one hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds. Here it comes. This is the question: Which of these pop shows was broadcast first? A, B, C, or D? All vote now. Not, um... Not a vast margin. Not decisive. Um, 37% of the majority say 6-5 special. Well, the biggest vote, anyway. 33% um, ready, steady, go. 22% oh boy. 8% top of the pops. What are your instincts, Ross? What, um, what I'll tell you what my instincts are. The top of the Pops was 64, 1964. Ready, Steady, Go, Kathy McGowan was another 60s show. I seem to remember clips of the old black and white 6-5 special, which was before my time, but when they show archive stuff, I seem to remember this very old-fashioned black and white train. It's very kind of cheesy 50s, which would put C much earlier for me than either of the other two. And what about Old Boy? Old Boy. I'm not sure about that one. Well, I mean, as far as the audience concerned, it is close, but it's close between Ready, Steady, Go and Six High Special. Yeah. There's only 22% going for Old Boy. Um, so they're 50-50, if you like, is Ready, Steady, Go and Six High Special. Well, and out of those two, you would go for Six High Special? I think I would. And I'd be very reluctant to, to, to risk that money, but I think guided by the... I mean, if we've used a lifeline, we've not been callously shot in the dark, have we? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got a 50-50 if you want it. Is a 50-50 going to help your us? your call. Would you do your odds? It could help us an awful lot. It could, it could, it could absolutely define it for me. Right. Or not. <laughs> We're not going to get to a million, though, if we blow another lifeline. <laughs> your optimism is I love cake. <laughs> um, but I suppose we'd better be sensible. <laughs> I, think, I, I think rather save money than lifelines. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Shall we use a light? Uh, use 50 /50? Yeah, let's go for 50 /50. Yeah. So if you can then give us 50 50. Okay, computer take away two wrong answers. Leave Ross and Kay the correct answer and one remaining random wrong answer. Oh, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> What did that mean? Six wasn't sixty-five. It was, it was, I think it came on at five past six. 
Well, that's a good idea. And it was like a... Oh, I, I, look, my instinct was 6-5 special. The audience said 6-5 special. It's still there. Well, I mean, I, I honestly do not have a clue. Old boy sounds an older title to me, which is the most ridiculous thing to say. Um, what? Tell me again why you think it's 6-5 special. Um, it's not that I, I knew it was the oldest out of all the other ones. The old boy is the one I'm not sure about. Percentage terms, how confident would you be? 60-40. Well, we're not going to answer old boy, are we? Because we, you know, this is the only one we would answer if we were going to answer six by a special. Yeah. Um, Stating the obvious here. Yeah. Um, I'm, my temptation is to risk it. As is mine, because I think we've. I appreciate what Chris says that we've not. The fact that this has survived two, two lifelines and instinct doesn't make it the right answer, but I, I, 6 5 special is still there for me. I think we'll go for 6 5 special. Up to you. Feel cool. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Final answer 6 5 special. We'll take a break. Join us again in the couple. Oh! The second part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the second part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? It's another charity special. They were playing brilliantly. They got up to £64,000. They still had two lifelines left. They got to this question. Which of these pop shows was broadcast first? Oh, boy, 6-5 special. Ready, steady, go on top of the pops. They got rid of two. The majority of the audience, 37%, not a high majority, actually, said 6-5 special. They went for a 50-50, or reduced it to oh boy, and still 6-5 special. They did not have to play this question at all. <laughs> How do you feel? Thanks, Chris. <laughs> How do you feel? Um, I th well, yeah, I think we've got it wrong. But we've done it now, haven't we? Yeah. It's gone orange. It's the right answer. You've got 125 <gasps> Inscrutable, because you must have known the answer to that question. Because I knew the answer, I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking at you, looking at you, there was nothing. No! I thought, oh, I got Whoa. it wrong. Now, listen. Oh. Gee. Have a look. 1957, Pete Murray presented it. Have a look at that. That's what you've done. Oh, that's great. That's Pretty really good, good, eh? Well done, that's guys. Really well done, good. Ross. Well done, Kay. Now, you are three away from <laughs> one million pounds. Let's just ask you at this moment, what a snip actually do? What do they do for kids? Because you're the parent. Right. What do, they, what do yeah. they do? Well, it stands for Special Needs Information Point. Mm -hmm. And it's based at the, the Royal... The Sick Kids in Edinburgh. It's got a fancy name that I always get mixed up. Um, the Royal Hospital for Six Children. Um, and basically, any child who has got any form of special needs, medical needs are obviously taken care of. But there's so many other things, so much information and other sort of services and facilities they need, and often kind of fall through the net. So SNP coordinates all of that. So, I mean, everyone involved with SNP will be watching this and very, very excited. Well, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic result, £125,000. Yeah. Right, fingers crossed. You are three away from one million. You have no more lifelines left, but the next question is worth a huge £250,000. It's worth a quarter of a million. Question number 13 of a possible 15. Here it is. What was the first name of Swiss hotelier Ritz, who opened the Ritz Hotel in London in 1906? César, Pierre, Christophe, Michel. It's worth a quarter of a million. Who knows that stuff? Mrs. Well, Ritz, Mrs. Mm. Ritz, his mother. <laughs> Well, they're all potentially Swiss 
um, sort of Frenchy sounding names, aren't they? Michelle, Pierre, Christophe, César is the one that stands out. I just Germanic. don't know, but I just think in terms of, we said if, if we got this far, it would have to be copper bottom before we'd risk that amount of a drop, to be fair. This is your nice way of telling me we've got to stop and go now, isn't it? That would be the diplomatic yeah. interpretation. It's up to you. You've got £125,000 if you give me a wrong answer here. You've still got that 32000 guaranteed, but you drop £93,000. It's a lot of money to lose to that charity. We will go away delightedly with £125,000, which is a fantastic Final amount of money. Yeah. Fine line. But we think it's Cesar. <laughs> <laughs> OK, they have been tremendous. Give them a huge hand. One hundred. You can take it now. One hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds. Well played. Thank you. Great result. Yep, yeah, that, that is that is an awful lot of money. Just um, before you go, if you said to me, Cesar, I'd take that check out your hand and tear it into a thousand pieces. Thank God for that. And I would replace it with um, one for a quarter uh, of a Well, you know, this, that Cesar was the right answer. Stop the tape and rewind. <laughs> 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 125,000 pounds. That's it, guys. Really good. Thank you. Hey, what's okay. going <laughs> He's good. 125,000 pounds. What like? Turn of tonight's ten brand new contestants, each hoping to pick up their very own check for one million pounds. Let's meet them. They are Steve Eastman from Hampshire, John Pellow from Cornwall, Joss Wardle from Warwickshire, Innes Armstrong from Lancashire, Peter Tedlow from Derbyshire, Paul Twiddle from the West Midlands, Alan Stepper from Lancashire. Denise Sandy from Derbyshire, Eric Fitzgerald from West Yorkshire, and one more, Chris Skinner from Buckinghamshire. <laughs> Trying to play fastest finger first. Now remember, four answers, only one correct order. Get the order right in the fastest time, and you'll be next tonight to play for one million pounds. Here comes the first question. Starting with the fewest, put these national flags in order of how many different colours they have. France, Japan, United Arab Emirates, South Africa. OK, ten brand new contestants. Let's get the right order first, then. Starting with the fewest. Uh, the one with the least, actually, is Japan. Japan has just two colours. Uh, then it's France. France has three. Uh, then it's uh, UAE, United Arab Emirates, that has four colours. And the one with the most is South Africa, that has six colours on its national flag. Now, that's the right order. Probably quite hard for you. Ten star. Let's see how many got it right out of ten. How many got it correct? These were right. Only one! Eric Fitzgerald in 7.24 seconds. What well up, Eric? You're the only one to go and say you're in Of course you do. Right, here we go again, back to serious money. This is Eric Fitzgerald, an electronics engineer from Bradford in West Yorkshire. Up in the audience, his girlfriend Jackie, while the kids Jake and Jade are watching at home. Eric's advice to himself about being on the show tonight is don't be the first person this series to leave with nothing. <laughs> don't be. While Jackie simply told him, don't fall off the seat. <laughs> Why is that? Are you... Well, that's a good plan, isn't it? It's a good start. Well, stay on the... It is a good plan to stay on the seat. That hanging, helps. Hanging on firmly. That's a good one. That's a good... Because it's a long way down as it well. It is. Oh, well, you're a big lad. Are you, um... Are you sort of basically a bit clumsy? Mm, sometimes, I'm I am. Just looking at Jackie. I'm just looking. She's Some... nodding ahead. I can be sometimes. Because, I mean, uh, as part of your job as an electronics engineer, you do a lot of stuff with TV sets and whatever. Mm. And you have broken one or two. I've dropped the odd one through front doors and things, yeah. Hang on, let's go back on it. You've dropped them through front doors. Mm, it happens sometimes, Chris. What, you drop a TV set Well, you bang your funny bone and... <laughs> new front door. <laughs> new front door? TV broken? New front door? Happens. Does it happen? It does happen. Um, 
you say that if you get a reasonable amount of money tonight, and I, and I hope you do, um, you'd really like to more or less completely give up work. And would actually like, become, you would like to think so. Yeah, and become a, a horse racing pundit. That's my loving life, yeah. As Are you well good, Jackie? Do you pick winners? I do pick winners, yeah. Do you? Okay, well, fingers crossed tonight. Eric is just 15 correct answers away from winning £1 million. He has three brand new lifelines to help him on his way. Lots of luck, Eric. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, question number one is for 100 quid. What is the name of the US state that was third to join the Union in 1787? New Cardi, New Jersey, New Woolly, New Pulley. Uh, that would be New Jersey. It would be New Jersey got 100 pounds. <laughs> quite right, Eric. Nobody has gone away this year for nothing before. Please don't let it be you. I'm sure it won't be. This is for 200 quid question number two. What name is given to the sleep you need to keep looking young, healthy, and attractive? Beauty sleep. Loveliness sleep. Glamour sleep. Prettiness sleep. That would be beauty sleep. So right out, you've got £200. <laughs> OK, question number three is for £300. You still have all three lifelines. Have a look. Tell me the right answer. The actress Noel Gordon appeared in which TV soap for almost 20 years? Crossroads. Emmerdale. Coronation Street. East Enders. Sad about no lies, Crossroads. It's not that sad. <laughs> it's right, you've got £300. <laughs> was uh, Meg, wasn't she? You got £300. Question number four is for 500 Eric, take your time. You've got all three lifelines. Here it comes. What does the N stand for in the abbreviation CND? Nuclear. Nemesis. Nutritional. Napalm. That would be nuclear. Please. So right answer, you've got £500. CND campaign for nuclear disarmament. Right, Eric, you were worried about going home with nothing. You were one step away from guaranteeing yourself at least £1,000. You have all three lifelines. This is question number five. Complete the title of the Prince single, Little Red, Chrysler, Corvette, Car, Cadillac. That would be Corvette. So right out, you've got £1,000. We'll play that. No problem at all. pounds you're ten away from a million this is question number six who won a best director Oscar for the film Saving Private Ryan Martin Scorsese Steven Spielberg Brian De Palma Stanley Kubrick that's Steven Spielberg final answer, final answer. absolutely right you got two thousand pounds <laughs> You got £2,000. Question number seven is for 4000 The plague known as the Black Death was carried to England by fleas living on which animals? Rats, monkeys, horses, pigs. That's rats, Chris. Final answer. Final answer. That's the right answer. You got £4,000. <laughs> You got £4,000. Question number eight is for 8000 You still have not touched a lifeline. You're eight away from a million. What nationality is tennis player Thomas Johansson, the 2002 Australian Open winner? Norwegian, German, Danish, Swedish. He's Swedish, Chris. Not Norwegian. You know, he played in the Davis Cup against Great Britain. Sweden against Great Britain. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer, you've got £8,000. <laughs> Starting to enjoy this yet? A little bit. I'm little just waiting for the stinker. The stinker? It won't be far away around the corner, will it? That's a fact. The pig. They always call it the pig. <laughs> the pig comes out. Let's see. You've got £8,000. The good thing is you've got all three lifelines to help you through if you do get stuck. 
You've had no problem at all so far. Question number nine is for 16,000. The town of King's Lynn stands on the mouth of which river? Great Ouse, Neen, Stour, Cherwell. This is the stinker, I think. Is this the stinker? It could be the stinker, yeah. The Great Ouse, the Neen or Nen, some locals call it up there. Uh, the Stour or the Cherwell. I will uh, ask the audience, Chris, I think. OK. Audience on your keypads, please. Let's get Eric up to £16,000. This is the stinker. Right, this is the question. The town of King's Lynn stands on the mouth of which river? A, B, C or D? It's worth £16,000 to Eric. All vote now. Um not hugely convincing, but it's 36% say Grey Doos, 26% say Neen, 21% uh, Star, 17% Cherwell. Can I go 50-50, please? You can. Computer take away two wrong answers. Leave Eric the right answer and one remaining random generated answer. Well, I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to go Grey Doos. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You got sixteen thousand pounds. <laughs>